take that introduction. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's great to be back in Ottawa County. I haven't been here in 19 hours and 45 minutes. Most of you who've met me before know I hate the microphone. It's impersonal. It doesn't reach out to you and you don't hear my real voice. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for bringing me back here to the Women's Business and Professional Group. Let me start with a quick introduction with greetings, my fellow capitalists. I'm here as an arch advocate of the free enterprises, as someone who lives in it day to day. I'm a small business owner. I get to pay my mortgage when my customers pay me. And that's a really big deal because I was actually on the phone today with a client with about 275 days out on almost $10,000 worth of invoices. So I'm fighting out here in the economy with you right now under the rules, regulations, and all the premises of all levels of government from the local, the state, and the federal side. So I know what it's like to be one of you. I understand what it means to be fighting day by day in here in the real economy. Now, for the record, I was out of the real economy for five years. I spent five years of my life on active duty in the United States Navy. I got out as a lieutenant. I spent my last duty station was the USS Wadsworth at that G9 out of San Diego, California. We were the ready duty drug ship on the West Coast. Every time I left, we did not head across the Pacific. We made a hard turn to port and went to Central America or South America, where I got to fight the drug war. No, numerous busts. The most famous one I was involved with was the Natalie One. We had about 18 Colombian prisoners when we were done, and I had 10 tons of pure, unstepped on cocaine in my possession. Street value, $1 billion. It's quite a sight to behold in one. But that's how we tackle the first stage of the drug crisis in this country. We must secure the border. We must interdict the poison that is killing our kids, our coworkers, and our family members. That's the first step to it. Second, the most important issue that's been brought to me as I'm walking through the ninth District is actually about the economy, and it ties to the first one real well. There's lots of reasons that people will dive into despair and make a poor choice to stick a needle into their arm with heroin or to indulge in other destructive behavior. But the number one is when you lose hope in your future. For 30 plus years, and particularly for the last seven and a half, Northeast Ohio in this district has not grown. The official unemployment rate in the country is just under 5%. Someone who I don't often take his word at, but I fully believe on this one, Senator Bernie Sanders out of Vermont says the real unemployment rate in this country is north of five, it's north of 10, it's probably 15 or 20. And it's because of all the people who dropped out of the economy, they're not looking for jobs, they're underemployed, they can't take care of their family because the country's not working anymore. We are not growing like we had throughout the great history of the American economic boom. So what are we going to do about it? It's what you're going to do about it. Anybody who stands in front of you and says, I'm here from the government, and I have the answers, and we're going to make everything better, is lying to you. The greatest president of my lifetime, in this inaugural address, said that government isn't the solution to our problems. The government is our problem. All of you here who've got real jobs, real customers who punch a clock in the day in and day out and get a paycheck realize that you're the secret of our success. It is by getting you fully employed, smart kids out of Ohio State, Bowling Green, the University of Toledo, creating new businesses, new enterprises, generating wealth, growing the economy, creating new jobs. That's the way we get out of this. <coughs> and there's nothing more important than getting the economy going. That will solve a huge percentage of our drug issues. It will do a great thing for families, friends, and with new resources, we can protect <coughs> the environment. Because quality of life, standard of living, and life expectancy depend first and foremost on prosperity. And it is a new age of prosperity that we've got to usher in here today. I defer the rest of my time back to the chair, and I'll be happy to stick around afterwards and answer questions from everyone here. Thank you.